bastante entendible. El primer taller educativo va a ser acerca de las finanzas básicas. El segundo taller educativo va a ser acerca de la jubilación o el retiro. El número tres, y para concluir con nuestra serie de tres talleres educativos, vamos a tener pequeñas empresas. El costo de cada taller, si usted es miembro de KBBF, solo le va a costar 20 dólares. Y si no es miembro de KBBF, le va a costar 40 dólares por taller. ¿Dónde los vamos a hacer? Es en 1700 Corby Avenue, aquí en la hermosa ciudad de Santa Rosa, en el Centro Laboral de Carpinteros. Y el cupo es limitado. Y esto es 30 y ni uno más. Por favor, tomen nota. El primero, el sábado 22 de noviembre, de 9 a 11 de la mañana. Así que, por favor, llame a KBBF al 707-545-8833. This is KBBF 89.1 FM, Calistoga. Esta es KBBF 89.1 FM, Calistoga. Hello, everybody. You are listening to The Queer Life on KBBF 89.1. LGBT news, modern perspectives, roundtable discussion, and interviews. <clears throat> I am your host, Kaya Kramer, and as always, I am joined with my co-host, Mandy Howard. How come the ass always sounds so uh, dooming? As <laughs> always. As always. In the next episode, as always, our heroes. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're we're always here. We're every Friday night. We actually Sunday. live in the studio, right? Yeah, we, we live in the studio, and we just wait until it's Friday night, and we're mm -hmm. like, oh, Friday night. Okay, great. Awesome. Roll up, roll up your sleeping bag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we, you know, we come on because it's 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 the time. It's the time to share all this 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 change in, in, in culture and media. And I mean, I mean, this, this is a very special episode. I know that I, I say that probably every episode, but I think every episode is a very special, you episode. know, it's like, how can you choose? It's like my, these episodes are like my children. How can you choose between your children? You know, you really can, but you know, this <laughs> one's definitely my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so don't, don't tell the others. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, Oh my gosh! I mean, this 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 week we we had Transgender Day of Remembrance, um, mm -hmm. which which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Um, but and to celebrate Transgender Day of Remembrance, you tortured me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So I, I brought my co-host Mandy to uh, uh, to to uh, to a little bit of Bikram, the you know that hot yoga stuff. Oh my um, gosh. And, uh, you know, I told her, I'm like, you know, everybody seems to tell us, you know, as trans people, we're often told to go to hell a lot. So we went to yoga hell. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is true. You we know. figured we'll try it out, you know, <laughs> since everyone wants us to go. <laughs> so That's um, totally what they meant, right? Exactly. That's exactly what they <laughs> meant. Yoga. But, um, all right. So we, we got some great stuff lined up for you this evening. We're going to talk about Transgender Day of Re Remembrance. Uh, we got an interview lined up. Um, it, it is a pre-recorded interview, but I, it does not draw away from the fact that it's awesome, but you just can't call in during the time. And you can call in. You can talk to me, but like, yeah. Just want to also let y'all know that this episode, like every single other episode of The Queer Life on KBBF 89.1, shameless plugging, anyway, um, <laughs> is at um, www.thequeerlife.org. And you can actually watch, yes, I mean watch every episode of this radio show because we stream it live on uh, YouTube. And so you can go to the website and you know watch, you know, find this current episode 
and uh, check it out. And you know, if you have the capability of watching YouTube on your phone or your computer, which just about every phone and every computer can do these days, um, you are in for a treat. You'll get to see um, what we look like in the studio here, and uh, you know. Rain dancing and stuff, which so which has been successful. Every episode, you know, as we play the music, my I rain dance, and um, now we have rain. So I feel partially responsible for this rain. It's worked perfectly well. Exactly. <laughs> so um, all y'all, uh, just uh, just sit tight. It is six o five p.m. You know, be safe on the road. The roads are a little wet. Sh should you have like um, weather music or time music? The time is boo doo doo. <laughs> you are listening to the queer life. It is eighty percent humidity. We just got to get a British girl to do that. You know. Exactly, or a girl from Singapore. Debbie, yeah. yeah, yeah, Singapore. You are now listening to the queer life. My word, you're in for a good time. <laughs> True story. I talked to this trans girl, and she kept saying my word. I'm my sorry, word. I'm my out there, word. all you Britishies people. Britishies. I'm. British, I'm yeah, I. Santa Rosa <laughs> I, 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 yeah, anyway, <laughs> music, woo!
All right. Hello, everybody. Again, you're listening to The Queer Life, LGBT News, Modern Perspectives, Roundtable Discussion, and Interviews. I'm your host, Kaya Kramer. And again, with me, as no, always, no. is Mandy Howard. <clears throat> You're supposed to say something. <laughs> I, I said no, no. That's that's my whole bit. No, no, Miss Mandy, no, no, no. no. <laughs> so, like I said, um, we have an we have some great stuff for you today. Um, this week was the uh, we had Transgender Day of Remembrance. Mm -hmm. Um, and what, yeah. and what is that about? Oh my gosh! I'm glad you asked. Yeah, I, I'm um, very curious. Yeah, I I I queued up the Wikipedia uh, article so I can just read it for you just for that reason. Sweet, the wiki. <laughs> <clears throat> so transgender day of remembrance. And again, this is from Wikipedia, mm -hmm. uh, which occurs annually on November twentieth. Is a day to memorialize those who have been killed as a result of transphobia. Um, the hatred or fear of transgender and gender non-conforming people, and to bring attention to the continued violence endured by the transgender community. Uh, transgender Day of Remembrance was founded in 1999 by Gwendolyn Ann Smith, a trans woman who is a graphic designer, columnist, and activist, to memorialize the murder of Rita Hester in Alston, Massachusetts. Since its inception, TDOR, Trans Day of Remembrance, has been held annually on November 20th, and it has slowly evolved from the web-based project started by Smith into an international day of action. In 2010, TDOR was observed in over 185 cities throughout more than 20 countries. Uh, typically, a TDOR memorial includes a reading of the names of those who've lost their lives during the previous year, and may include other actions such as candlelight vigils, art shows, food drives, film, mm, film screenings, and marches. The TDOR is the culmination of Transgender Awareness Week. The Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, GLAD, um, has extensively covered Transgender Day of Remembrance. GLAD has interviewed numerous trans advocates, including actress Candace Kane. Uh, profiled at an event at the New York City LGBT Community Center and discussed media coverage of TDOR. Um, so there you go. Wow. Um, yeah, that sounds like an amazing thing. I mean, obviously I know about it, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, are, are you aware of any anything locally that went on? I, I know they had something in the city. Obviously, I wasn't able to go. But... Yeah, they had a, a, a TDOR, Transgender Day of Remembrance, in San Francisco. Um, hosted by the SF LGBT Center, which is at 1800 Market Street in San Francisco. Um, you know, they had a bunch of uh, you know guest guest speakers. Um, they had entertainment. Uh, actually, a friend of of, of ours, oh, uh, yeah. Brianna, right? Brianna, yeah, Brianna, Brianna, Elise mm -hmm. Sinclair. Yeah, I, I read that one. Yeah, she uh, she performed at awesome. it. She's kind of She's killing great. it out there. Yeah, you know, first trans opera singer from SF. Music conservatory. Exactly. Um, great. More trans people. Trans people everywhere. Yeah, you know, we're everywhere. We're in your work. You know, we're in your, we're in your coffee shops. You know, we're in your school. Heck, we're in your newspaper. <laughs> yeah, we're in your newspaper. Oh my gosh, <laughs> should we talk about that? I don't know. We haven't even really talked about, you know, the whole where I go every day. Yeah, um, that's the other secret. <laughs> For, we have many to, secrets on the show. To talk about that, we'd have to reveal that. I yeah, I don't know if we're we're ready for that. Our listeners might not be ready. Listeners, are you ready for it? No. Well, they got to call in and let us know they're ready. If you're ready for it, you can give us a call 707-545-0318 and we're always so pleased to hear what you have to say. Um we're very very pleased. Like beyond pleased. We've had some interesting yeah. callers actually. Yeah. Uh, quite a quite a few actually. Yeah. Like, I mean <laughs> <laughs> like some very interesting very interesting <laughs> like is this reality <laughs> yeah is this reality i don't know <laughs> wait is this happening right now i i you know are, are we here right now like are we on the air like at this moment i don't know <laughs> <laughs> is there somebody we can call to ask yeah we should call into a radio show and ask them yeah <laughs> But um, if you want to know if this is reality, yeah. actually, correction, if you don't know that this is reality, please do not call this don't show. Don't call in. <laughs> I, think don't, Ms. Don't. I think Miss Cleo is a better hotline to yeah, call we don't, for we don't that. Have the answers yeah. 
But again, if you have any questions about LGBT uh, termage, uh, news, what's going on, yeah. why we're here, what's the point of this all, are we actually appropriate for this radio station or public airways? I just want to know <clears> if <throat> termage is a word. Termage, yeah. Termage. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm making a new term, termaging. I mean, it could be, but... Term. <laughs> Termogen, turbine. <laughs> you advice? You're terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I'm sorry, there's like way too many random pop culture references. Even if you get our pop culture references, you can give us a call on that. What yeah, were we talking about? And if you don't get them, give us a call. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, also, that's a good segue for my disclaimer. <laughs> um, everything you hear here. Uh, here on this radio show, that's what I should here, say here. for now. Yeah, everything you hear here, on this here. radio show um should be taken somewhat with a grain of salt um you know we will talk about medical subjects we will talk about legal subjects we will talk about mental health subjects we will talk about um a whole bunch a whole bunch of areas that you know oftentimes require professionals um now you can hear me doubly awesome oh yeah <laughs> no actually no i don't have that turned on Aww. yeah so you're out of luck. Yeah. But uh, like I said, there's there's a lot of serious things that we do talk about on here. Um, please, uh, you know, consult an actual doctor, consult an actual mental health professional, consult an actual lawyer. Um, do your own research. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not doctors. Yeah, we're not doctors yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, you know, we're not mental health professionals. And so... Um, <clears throat> we're just people that have done a fair bit of research and are sharing what we've learned with all y'all out there. And uh, so that's, 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 that's really important to know. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and again, like, like I said, you can, you know, you can check all the links that we talk about on the website, thequeerlife.org. Uh, most of the, the news articles that we'll talk about, you know, the you know, Wikipedia page to transgender day of remembrance, that's, on the web page there mm -hmm. you can check it out you can also tweet us at the queer life or follow us on facebook facebook.com slash the queer life or follow us on youtube specifically <laughs> um mm -hmm. youtube.com slash user slash the queer life wait are you, are you talking about the youtube the youtube the, YouTube. the facebook the, the twitter the tweeter <laughs> <laughs> the face place yeah <clears throat> but uh mm -hmm. some of um, some other things that we're going to be uh, talking about here, and I, and I want to touch a little bit more on Trans Day of Remembrance in a moment here, but uh, we're going to talk about myths about transition regrets. Um, that's, uh, that, that was an article that came out recently that uh, really caught our eyes. Uh, myths about transition regrets. Literally, people... In, in other words, people who you know, regret transitioning. And by transitioning, we mean transgender people coming out as being transgender. Well, not just coming out, but yeah. like actually uh, going on hormones or, or having surgery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, you get the, you know, you go under the block, you know, the chopping block and, you know. Yeah, it, it's all the things <clears throat> that people tell other people to like scare somebody else who hasn't yet gone through it. And like, well, all these other people didn't like it for these reasons and these people didn't like it for that reason. So right. these are all like the most common basically myths. And in other words, they're not really true. Right. You know, so, or, or if they're not, it's not that they're not really true, but they don't really hold true for the majority of people who are trans. Absolutely. So we want to talk about that as well. Um, we're going to, um, you know, it was recently Veterans Day, mm -hmm. um, you know, Thank you to all the veterans out there. You're um, welcome. <laughs> um, as um, many of you do not know, because um, <laughs> we don't really talk about ourselves very much. Yeah, on we this never show. really talk about ourselves. Um, uh, Miss Mandy here, she is a veteran. Yeah, I was and, in the Navy. Yeah, how long were you in the Navy for? Uh, active duty, I was four years, and then in the reserves, just four years. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so you were surrounded by a lot. <laughs> no, don't say it. I was surrounded by a lot of sailors, yes. yes. <laughs> Hey, sailor. <laughs> Actually, sailor uniforms are quite cute. Absolutely. I know, right? <laughs> I, sh I should know I wore one for a long time. That's right. So um, thank but you. I, I looked way yeah. different. So thank you, Mandy, and thank you, everybody else who it has served and is actively serving. Um, we seriously, seriously you know, support you um, and honor you. And... Also, that there are indeed trans uh, uh, veterans, um, 
There's Wait. one sitting in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, we know a lot of trans veterans. Yeah. Quite a few. Yeah, quite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's there, right. Are you just even our Yeah, you know, even just group. our support group. Yeah. There's uh, many trans veterans. Um. So, you know, that's it's it's. There's so many trajectories in terms of oh, yeah. being trans and coming out. Um. There's also statistically speaking probably at least 15,500 trans people actively serving right now but yeah in the closet <laughs> well yeah you know in in the yeah in the small closet that you get on the bunk of the ship but, oh you know, <laughs> it's more of a, a coffin rack they call it on yeah. the ship <laughs> so even though dose don't ask don't tell has been repealed um it does not apply to trans women yep because or men um, we are apparently not mentally fit to serve. No. Mm -mm. Well, this is true. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to have radio shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to to keep you company on your ride home every Friday evening. Yeah, there you go. Uh, out there in traffic where it's freaking crazy. Yeah, please, please be careful. <laughs> Super careful. Yeah. Don't watch us on YouTube. Listen to us on the radio. Yes, yes. <laughs> but when you get home, you watch us on YouTube. Watch us on YouTube. Yeah. That's great. Um, the last uh, article that we want to talk about, and sometimes we don't even get to the last article or the last two, um, Georgian transgender activist Sabi Biryani murdered and immolated. Mm -hmm. and, and when we're saying Georgian, we're saying uh, in in Europe, right? Like, yeah. Or Asia, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not not, uh, not the American East Coast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that connects to our Transgender Day of Remembrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because... Not only do trans people kill themselves due to societal pressures, stress, um, discrimination, and a whole litany of hatred out there and internalized hatred, <clears throat> but trans people die by the hands of people who just plain do not like us. Um, you know, I there, there's there's you know, and I and even though we're in Sonoma County, even though this is supposed to be a an open and and, and safe place, you mm -hmm. know, there's there's places that I've gone to around here that you know people have you know said to me, all right, sir, what can I get for you, sir? Or the you know the people have told me that I'm gonna go to hell. Or, I I've had people yeah. following me before. Yeah, like just like random randomly What's and they follow you for like several blocks if that's, you're out walking that's scary or out at the mall right it reminds me of the sexual harassment video yeah, with, yeah. The, with that one dude who like followed her for like 20 minutes exactly i've actually yeah. had people uh especially when i was first coming out when i wasn't really out super publicly but i would go out i'd had i had people taking pictures of me you're kidding it's, no it's oh crazy. my gosh video oh pictures gosh. that's disgusting mm -hmm. oh my gosh I mean, like, how, how, I mean, when, when it comes to, like, social niceties and, and standards and stuff, a lot of that kind of gets thrown out when people, you know, think about it in terms of, of trans people. I mean, it's one thing to ask us about our genitals, but it's another thing to just, you know, to, to, you know, to threaten our lives, you know? <laughs> and just so we're clear, it's not okay to ask us about our genitals. No, it is not. Um, and that might seem obvious. That really will be like, well, of course, I won't ask you about your channels. Donald Trump, America. You know? No, I don't. I don't know if you've heard this one, but I've had people tell me before. They go, you know, I don't. I don't mean this in a derogatory way, <laughs> but to, to do what you're doing, you have some major balls. You have major balls. Which is kind of confusing. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> considering. Um... <laughs> Oh, you got some big ones. Yeah. What is that supposed to be? I don't know. <laughs> you know, so, well, I couldn't do what you're doing. Well, of course, because you're sis. Mm, yeah, you you're know? sis, and you obviously couldn't do it. Yeah. So you'd be miserable. Yeah, I am I guarantee you, you'd be miserable, much in the way that we're miserable being trying to be sis. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's super hard to be sis when you're not. Yeah, I mean, imagine if you came home one day and your mom told you, all right, put a dress on, son. But Come mom... On. But mom, I don't like a dress. <laughs> How do you know until you've tried it? Uh. Uh. <laughs> I love Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Although that wasn't his routine exactly. Yeah, we that's... can't say his routine on the radio. Yeah, but you can look it up. <laughs> Ricky Gervais. Yeah, um, Ricky Gervais is uh, on being gay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he, he compares uh, being gay with being fat, or like the the excuses that are made for for both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like one's a choice and one's not. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you can decide to put a hot dog in your mouth, and then you can just... <laughs> I think we're getting too close to that one. There's the line. There's yeah, the line. No here's the, here's the line in the sand. Do not <laughs> cross it. Anyway, though, but um, um, eventually we might reveal a secret um about um ourselves on the show, particularly Miss Mandy here, yeah. who um. <laughs> Well, eventually I'll tell you what planet I'm from. So. Yeah. yeah, you know, from nowhere. <laughs> if anybody's seen Guardians of the Galaxy, you know? <laughs> right? I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh my gosh, movie. such a great movie! If anybody hasn't seen it, I've yet. only seen it like five or six times. Oh my gosh, it just came out on digital. Sorry, we will have. I guarantee you, everybody, we will have nerd moments on the show. Um, other than being fabulous uh, transsexual women, um. <clears throat> We're also human beings. <laughs> yeah, we love. We're nerds. Yes, we're human nerds. So, um, <laughs> like seriously, um, you're you're gonna have to get some inside jokage. You're gonna have to hear about Family Guy. You're gonna have to hear about South, uh, Park. South Park. You know, all you sissies out there using break, your break sissies, out the wiki. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Wiki time. <laughs> so all 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 good stuff. All good mm -hmm. stuff. But um, <laughs> anyway, I should start playing the interview uh, with Shaddy before we run out of time because it's about an hour long. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. by the time you're done, it'll be. Do you need to do any promos before you do that? Or... Yeah, yeah. I'll 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 play some promos here and then and then lead in with that. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm gonna play a little music for all y'all wonderful you know guys and girls out there and um i certainly hope that you enjoy the interview with shadi petoski um she runs a film studio called puny entertainment in la that's los angeles i'm sure everybody knows what that is but <laughs> not a uh, lower alabama or louisiana or... yeah <laughs> lower alabama <laughs> <laughs> okay awesome 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 stuff so i'm gonna play a little bit of music here that play. would be impressive with trans uh you know running a studio like that out of lower alabama that'd be pretty impressive oh my gosh wow <laughs> you know it's like it'd be impressive i, I would feel a very martin luther kingy <laughs> oh wait that didn't end well kingy no yeah no. too soon Mm, yeah, way too soon. Wait, no, there's a movie coming out about that. Is there? Yeah, yeah. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Hooked on a Feeling. <laughs> Thank you. 
Las expresiones y comentarios no representan la ideología de KBBF ni la mesa directiva, sino que es la responsabilidad de sus actores. Hello everybody, my name is Elaine B. Holt and I'm the host and producer of a radio show here at KBBF 89.1 FM called Women's Spaces, which is dedicated to ordinary women doing extraordinary things. You can listen to the show every Monday from 11 to 12 noon. Thank you so much for listening. La lectura es una habilidad indispensable para el desarrollo del lenguaje y el éxito académico de sus hijos. Ayúdelos a adoptar ese hábito desde una edad temprana. Con libros de cuentos ilustrados, vea que sus hijos aprendan a decir los nombres de animales y otras cosas para ayudarlos a incrementar su vocabulario. Recuerde que usted, como padre o madre, es el primer maestro de sus hijos. Comience exponiéndolos a la lectura. Mensaje de la Universidad de California. A través de KBBF vamos a ofrecer tres talleres educativos muy valiosos y completamente en español. ¿Se imaginan recibir toda la información que va a ser la diferencia en lo que es su futuro económico completamente en español y en un vocabulario bastante entendible? El primer taller educativo va a ser acerca de las finanzas básicas. El segundo taller educativo va a ser acerca de la jubilación o el retiro. El número tres, y para concluir con nuestra serie de tres talleres educativos, vamos a tener pequeñas empresas. El costo de cada taller, si usted es miembro de KBBF, solo le va a costar 20 dólares. Y si no es miembro de KBBF, le va a costar 40 dólares por taller. ¿Dónde los vamos a hacer? Es en 1700 Corby Avenue, aquí en la hermosa ciudad de Santa Rosa, en el Centro Laboral de Carpinteros. Y el cupo es limitado. Y esto es 30 y ni uno más. Por favor, tomen nota. El primero, el sábado 22 de noviembre, de 9 a 11 de la mañana. Así que, por favor, llame a KBBF al 707-545-8833. From San Rosa, California. This is Hey everybody, yeah, you listen to the Sorry, I just I just I love that commercial. <laughs> I feel like we should have buzzers and stuff going on. You know, like in like a studio audience and or sound audience or whatever. We're live today, coming at you. Hey. Woo! Okay, Woo! I should probably play this interview before I run out of time. Yeah, you're going to run out of time. <laughs> All and right, y'all. So, again, you are listening to The Queer Life, LGBT news, modern perspectives, roundtable discussion, interviews. Oh, yeah, and interviews. <laughs> we do we do interviews. Yeah, we do interviews. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes we do interviews. Like Sometimes we just confuse the people we bring in. Yes, yes, yes. Or they confuse us. Yes, you know? this is true, too. This is true, so... Um, again, uh, I am your host, Kyra Kramer, and um, with my co-host, as always, Mandy Howard. Wait, with your co-host? With my co-host. I'm just hanging out with Mandy. Yeah, I'm just hanging out with Mandy. <laughs> we're, we're just hanging out. We're just chilling at KBBF, 1700 Corby Avenue Suite 2. If you want to you want to bring your torches and pitchforks somewhere, you can come outside there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be winning. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just make sure that, you know, let us finish the show first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lynch mob after. Exactly. <clears throat> Anyhow, though, uh, we have an interview with Shadi Potosky from Puny Entertainment, a uh, film production studio in Los Angeles. This is an interview I did with her, uh, and I thoroughly think you'll enjoy. I share these kinds of things because I want to let you know, and a lot of other all y'all out there who are statistically uh, trans in the closet, <laughs> 
I know that there are trans professionals out there. We're on the radio. We are doctors. We are lawyers. We uh, own production studios. We you know we have real jobs. Um, mm -hmm. Not you know not to put anybody down who does you know sex work, but that shouldn't feel like that's your only option. Yeah, no, um, there's so many other options. You know, but if you want to do sex work, you know we. Yeah, we support that. We support that too. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, anyway, here is the interview and I hope y'all enjoy the interview. Hello everybody, this is Kaya from the Queer Life Radio Show, also online, and if you're watching this online, you will get to see uh, the video of everything that's going on here. And my interview today is with Shadi Petoskey, and I'm probably pronouncing your last name wrong, is that correct? Uh, it's incorrect that you're pronouncing it wrong. You correctly pronounced it. All right, awesome. And I came across Shadi uh, through a Facebook group called uh, Trans Hollywood. And I see this, and uh, with my background in uh, learning film and, you know, just kind of being kind of a running gun person before I got into this whole radio media nonsense, I, uh, I, I was really interested in going down to Hollywood, and I see that there's all this all this this work going on in terms of the media and in terms of Laverne Cox and you know Emmy nom nominations and movies out there and trans representation so we've got a really crazy interview for you today and Shadi is going to kind of give us like the inside scoop into not only you know who she is as a person what she does uh, for you know as 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 a film person but also the simple fact that she is doing some amazing work in the trans community in Hollywood. So inside the actor's studio. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm <laughs> but um okay, so Shadi, thank you so so much for giving us this interview. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And so first off, I mean, could could you give us a little bit of background? on uh, what what it is that, that you do, um, your company, your role, and uh, the, you know, the film industry in Hollywood. For sure. I'm the co-owner and co-founder of a company called Peony, which is a 20-person production company mostly out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. But um, I moved to LA about two years ago. We're mostly known for working on the preschool show Yo Gabba Gabba. And then that kind of blew up, and then um, we were able to do a lot of other things. We worked on a couple movies, like Super and Movie 43, and Big Miracle. And then we um, we got uh, we did some pilots. We did pilots for IFC. We did work for higher on higher pilots for Fox and um, Comedy Central and Cartoon Network. And um, I just did a pilot for Disney Channel, and uh, you know. And so we're just doing a, a lot of work in and around uh, mostly kids entertainment, but we've also done um, some adult animated work. A lot of our work is animation and we also do digital um, media. So we just launched the website for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie and do a lot of work with Paramount and digital and, and we're just all over the place. Portland Day Activity Book, a lot of just entertainment, um, online media animation production. Whoa, whoa, whoa! So y'all are the real deal. You've got, you know, what's animation? You're doing commercials. You're doing movies. You're like, you're doing TV shows. So like, what aren't you y'all covering out there? That's just uh, everything else, <laughs> which is a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, you know, we're we're really design and comedy driven. So anything that feels like it kind of works in that world will will take a step at it um but we're kind of pairing our focus down i i've been writing a lot more we optioned four shows last year um three of my three of them were mine as co-creator with um with artists uh dave kagan mike owens and vincent Stahl. um and uh so we're kind of we've had kind of a more limited focus on creating and developing our our own shows or working with other people to develop shows. So it's really a lot more like a production company than like a digital studio like it was in the past. Yeah. We still do, but we still do plenty of um, work for higher work and services work as well. So uh so so did you found the studio? Did you did you create this yourself? I did. I was in a um 
a small studio making comic books and graphic novels called Big Time Attic in 2004. And, um, you know, uh, we, I, my background was in programming and so we, and, but I like to draw and we worked in comic books and then, um, a Cartoon Network and a company called Ham in the Fridge came to us and said like, oh, you can draw and program and design. Can you work on these Cartoon Network uh, games for us? And so uh, some of our first animation was just doing uh, in-game animation and voiceover and just DIY doing everything ourselves and learning it as we as we went. And um, that went really well. So I just started hiring interns and then employees and real animators and, and um, better programmers and then I ended up owning a business. So I started the company in 2007 and we're going on our almost eighth year. Wow, this is incredible. So it sounds like you've had some pretty great success with with your with your production company. Yeah, it's been nice. It's not, you know, it's not, um, I'm not a billionaire or anything. I just, I just, uh, but yeah, we, you know, I've been able to sell our work, and we have a, we're known for quality design, and so mostly, I, I do a couple of capabilities pitches here and there, but mostly people, people just call us at this point and say, you know, I heard you worked with so and so, and we'd love to work with you. All referrals, was well, and you know, as you know, the you know the best jobs come out of you know positive referrals from other people. So. Yeah. It's me. So, wow, wow. And so I, I just want to address the audience for a second here. And one of the most amazing things about Shadi doing all this work and having a successful production company is the, is the, is, is the very simple fact that, and is it okay? And I will actually, we talked about this beforehand, but I'm going to out you, all right? So, so you'll prepare for it. <laughs> uh, Shadi is a trans woman. Yeah, and people might be able to hear that through my voice, and I'm I'm a very visible trans person, so you certainly didn't help me. I, I'm I'm proud to be trans and happy to be trans. As you should be. That's something that we talk a lot about in the show. Oh, show that there's there's, there's 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 the notion of a lot of people going in and uh, to to transition, and after a few years, they become quote unquote so passable nobody knows and they go into stealth you know like kind of like a rogue in world of warcraft or whatever and they they there's there's this idea that that there's a great shame if you were to out them and we're trying to put forth the idea that there is no shame in being a transgender man or woman yeah and, yeah uh, sure and i think that's really catching on right like um Sorry for cutting you off. No, 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 uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> sorry, I saw your lips moving. Um, um, yeah, and I think that's I think that's pretty a pretty prevalent idea, and a lot of people that went self very successfully, and Janet Mock is a is a famous case, are are coming out and I, and being trans and being visibly trans and letting people know that we're out there, and I think people know that it's important that like as you know in in this civil rights movement that we're in people need to know us and see us and see us as productive members of society and, and successful and happy and, and doing things um, and not some of the old uh, cliches and stereotypes that they put on us as, as people. Absolutely. I mean, there's, we've, we've definitely come a long way. I remember being uh, a, uh, you know, a kid in the nineties and not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving my age away here. <laughs> yeah, there's no shame in being a kid in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like, even then, that wasn't that long ago, there was not uh, very much word about trans people out there. Um, and other than what I had heard from or seen from uh, my home country, I come from Thailand, and that's th that's obvious, you know, very obviously very prevalent over there, and it's something that you see a lot, but you only see trans people in sort of these fringe uh, sort of roles in society. And uh, I basically, I saw, I was like, okay, well, there's all these, you know, trans women. I didn't have the word for it, the word trans at the time, because uh, mm -hmm. everybody just used the word tranny, which uh, to anybody listening in our audience, that is um, generally considered pejorative by most of the, uh, uh, most modern thinking trans identified people, although there are um, 
divides in the community in, in terms of terms and usage. So I want to just throw out there, just to be careful whichever words you use. Um, and, I, and if you're ever unsure, ask the person that you are communicating with what's, uh, w what's appropriate for you, because um, that word might be appropriate for one person, it may not be appropriate for another. Um, Shadi, so what I, what, so I'll, can I ask you a little bit about your transition here for a moment? Sure. So did you transition prior to starting this comp to, to, to puny or uh, afterwards? No, during, uh, in, after for sure. Um, which, you know, probably had a lot to do with the success, uh, you know, waiting, biding my time. And then also I, I had a very, like, I guess, easy transition in that um, I didn't have to worry about anybody firing me. I definitely was terrified of losing my business and and um, and uh, and everything. But clients were yeah, just, clients were fairly good about it. I you know I sell a little bit. I didn't go to quite as many meetings in those early days. But now, and especially since moving to LA, people seem to be okay with it, and sometimes actually really cool with it. Like sometimes it's just like, oh, you're a little than you probably <laughs> would have been so um uh, so yeah transitioned on the job um employees i was also worried about them are in their 20s at the time and um hadn't met somebody who was trans in college or or knew somebody or are also okay with that so i i actually found myself in a couple of cases um there was this uh this animator and uh, you know now show creator um Julia Vickerman and when I when I came out she was like oh we're gonna we're gonna go to this party and you're gonna wear this and you're gonna do this. it was almost like she dragged me into transition a little faster than I was willing to go nice to have those people around that were so supportive in work and around work um yeah so my transition was relatively easy I was terrifying I definitely spent a lot of days in bed um and a lot of hours in therapy Trying to fight it because I, you know, at that time, especially and sometimes still, I'd rather not be trans than be trans. <laughs> um, but uh, you just at some point you're like, I can't fight this anymore. For me, it's been a lifelong. You know, I mean, so you know, even you, great success. You're getting respect out there in the community. You clearly have work. Your production company is still going strong. But you're talking about you know, so, you know sitting in bed. I think that you know. I'm sure many, many trans people can can relate to, but cisgender, uh, straight identified audience. Can you explain uh, a little bit about that? If it's not too uh, personal to get into, it's like what you know, what what, what you know, why is this such a big deal? Is the <laughs> I, I will explain depression to be fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, for me growing up uh, in the 80s, as a child of the 80s, I, it was just, there was just nothing worse to be. I grew up in a very rural area. <laughs> you know, my dad was like a ranch hand. We, um, my my mom joined the Air Force, so I grew up around the military. It was incredibly homophobic, transphobic environment, um, and, uh, and very rural. And um, it was just the worst possible thing you could be. So after years of hiding it, uh, you know, when you're four and five, and my, and this isn't true for every trans person, but four, five, six, seven, eight years old, um, you just kind of build up these defense mechanisms. And, and uh, my therapist explained to me that I compartmentalize. Through this compartmentalization, I just, I, I found work and I was able to like, you know, where a lot of people find maybe trans or alcohol, and you'll kind of see that in trans and queer communities a lot. Um, if they're shamed a lot as children, um, but I I found work and I found uh, you know an ability to talk my mind through work and through working. Even when I worked at Taco Bell, I worked at Taco Bell during the day and then you know and then <laughs> work job at night. Like I always had two jobs and work was all like just the way I handled things. So um, when I started going into therapy for the I, I started transitioning in my twenties. I was hurt very badly by a by a man, um, and uh, and terrified. And you know, like as I'm, I I'm attracted to men and and so 
Um, it was a gay, gay scene. It was in North Carolina. Um, and uh, it, was just, it was just seedy and underground and very shameful. And, and uh, through <laughs> that experience, I was just like, oh, I have to figure out how to beat this and overcome this. Um, this I transition. Also, you know, your your sexed body, like when you go through puberty, I sprouted up to five foot eleven and have these broad shoulders and this bagness. So like I never, be, you know, seen as female. No matter what I do, it's impossible for me personally. Um, so there were just there were a lot of uh, combinations of issues that just made it feel like my subconscious sex my femininity was impossible in society and then i just got to a point where i, was, I for whatever reason i started going to therapy for the third time and uh and we made a lot of progress and a lot of success able to sort of come out slowly and um and then it became a little bit do or die and i think that suicidal ideation for me really an effect and, and I did have one suicide attempt because it was almost like it's such a difficult thing to transition when you lose everything you're never going to find love you're never going to find any kind of happiness in this world that's so critical of trans people where every time you turn on the television there's just some joke or mean-spirited thing or you get bottles thrown at you or you get assaulted or murdered um it's almost like it, it has to be, for me, it was do or die. It was almost like I had to feel like I was killing myself to be able to, like, survive that. And luckily I didn't, you know, fail. And, and I had a lot of suicidal ideation for a while. But it was, it was through that suicidal ideation that I was able to say, like, well, I'm dead. Or I could just be, you know, screw it. <laughs> I can just be authentic. Um, so that was period in my life and uh, and I came up the other side and, and found a lot of support and, and um, you know now I think I get depressed out or melancholy like anyone else it's not that um, I'm sorry I'm not bipolar or, or or anything so it tends to be like oh my friend passed away or well, just sad things and uh, sad things in a hard life um, uh, and I'm not saying my life is hard but I just mean that life Hard. Right. So that's a rambling answer. But um, yeah, it was a really, it's really hard to transition. You have no idea what the outcome is going to be. You fear the worst. You, the images that were put into your head over what that means and what you're going to look like, feel like, and how people are going to react to you is so vile from everything that we're taught uh, that it's really hard. For some people, it's not as hard. But for a five foot 11, you know, person of my stature from uh, in, um, Montana farming stock where I was the runt of my hair, but still <laughs> kind of a large person. I just didn't think that anything good would come of my transition. And uh, as another trans person myself, uh, a lot of your story does resonate with me and the stories I've heard of other trans people, I'm sure that this resonates them as well so thanks for opening up and being a little bit vulnerable with us here because um uh this it's you know there there's there's a lot of pain but in 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 the transitioning and coming out and becoming true to to yourself that's in a way that allow yourself to heal and grow but there's you know you know no pain no gain kind of thing it's uh and yeah, like you said, there are some people that have had uh, e easier, quote unquote, transitions. But as I've been trying to say on the show since day one, everybody's trajectory in terms of transitioning, male to female, female to male, as a person, is different. We may we do share a lot of qualities, but we all come from it at different angles. And what might be hard for one person may be very difficult for another person. So um, you mentioned something in your in your story there that you know, growing up, we see all these these images of trans people in the media, and I want to shift over here to um, you know what what it is 
see culturally speaking we were shown on tv kind of and i learned this stuff in film school too you know you gotta you, you gotta create contrasts you have to create characters that are larger than life and uh oftentimes that doesn't translate very well to uh, uh trans identification in in film and television um and you're doing some some work in can i can i get you know, let me get your brain i want to i want to i want brain words on on this here <laughs> um and what as far as what i think i think it should be pretty obvious to people that trans representation in film and television has been terrible you've never seen any positive representation and and some people will will maybe counter that and say well it's sympathetic representation but it's very rare to see a film where a trans man or a trans woman falls in and, you know, there's no trans romantic comedy. There, there are indie films coming out now, but certainly when I grew up, there was nothing like that. It was very sensationalized. Um, and, you know, the, the common thing is you were, yeah, uh, you were, it was a joker or a sex worker. So it was a dead prostitute in an alley or somebody dealing with something very, pain, you know, painful. Um, hospital dramas would sensationalize it or or it was used in comedy somebody standing up at a urinal in a dress or or you know and somebody has sex with a woman or wants to and then finds out that they you know quote unquote used to be a man in that sensationalized way and then uh, you know ends up vomiting or ace ventura so it's just it's just been a terrible um re representation and you and then the, on the other side of it which is where i focus more is that there also has been no representative for trans creative people so if you're a young trans person who's like i would like to be a writer i would love to be an actor i'd like to do creative things in a in a service and creative economy there was nothing that said you could do that you know you'd be laughed out of the, the town um so that's really also very important is having representation in and around the role and seeing people um like Pilgrim and cox acting and and producing and, and doing things that's that's almost you know it's as important for us as uh and and they and they're tied together as more trans people are able to write and produce and act then we're going to see better trans representation on screen yeah, I uh, you brought up the, the little Jim Carrey scene, uh, um, Ace Ventura, and I totally forgot that that was kind of a stab at uh, a trans identified character, and it makes kind of uh, and I laughed. I grew up, but I laughed at it, and I didn't think about it, but it's it 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 kind of cemented itself in my subconscious, and then that in turn kind of influenced whether or not like hey you know i don't want to i don't want to be laughed at either and it, it makes me think of so um have you read julia's book the whipping girl yeah for yeah, sure for it's, sure. Great. it's great. Everyone great yeah there's it's it's fantastic it's pretty much on the level of the textbook and is oftentimes used as a textbook in feminist uh and gender studies and there's there's a notion in there that there's two kinds of trans representation in the film. There's the pathetic sexual, and there's the deceptive transsexual. And the pathetic transsexual is one, uh, uh, and, and and this this refers to trans women in this case, um, because apparently trans men don't exist. But <laughs> uh, as far as media is concerned, but. Right porn and then you have buck angel and then he's just awesome but it's uh <laughs> the pathetic transsexual is off um as the as very quote unquote unpassable um very clearly um um masculine in features uh they've and they've oftentimes have had the gender reassignment surgery and it's it's kind of you look on them with you know the word you used earlier was sympathy and that's kind of the story there and it's like and it's a very sad kind of depressing story and then there's the other representation which is probably quite a bit more common is that of the deceptive uh transsexual 
be will be a uh, very beautiful um cultural standards of beauty um you know <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Está usted escuchando KBBF 89.1 FM Calistoga. What up, y'all? This is DJ Broken Record. Make sure to tune in to the Broken Record Radio Show here on KBBF 89.1 FM in the North Bay. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. to hear dance music from all over the world. News, current events, interviews, and exclusive tracks and mixes from producers and DJs from around the globe. Broken Record Radio Show, Monday nights at 9 on KBBF 89.1 FM. We served our country like those before us. The camaraderie is what kept me going. You know, it was a dangerous era. All of Vietnam was dangerous. I didn't know what to expect when I got back. For the first 10 years after I got out, no one would have known that I was in the service. I got home, got married two weeks later, got a job. We came back, built lives, families, and communities, but we still had challenges. The carnage of war left an indelible mark on me. I would have intrusive thoughts. They're horrible nightmares. Services and support that can help are available for veterans. I went to the VA, talked to my doctor. I started doing groups. I started doing one-on-one -on -one counseling. We found ways to move past these challenges for ourselves and for our families. At MakeTheConnection.net, you can hear our stories and find tools and services available to you. The more I talk to people, family, friends, other vets, the better I feel. A través de KBBF, vamos a ofrecer tres talleres educativos muy valiosos y completamente en español. ¿Se imaginan recibir toda la información que va a ser la diferencia en lo que es su futuro económico completamente en español y en un vocabulario bastante entendible? El primer taller educativo va a ser acerca de las finanzas básicas. El segundo taller educativo va a ser acerca de la jubilación o el retiro. El número tres, y para concluir con nuestra serie de tres talleres educativos, vamos a tener pequeñas empresas. El costo de cada taller, si usted es miembro de KBBF, solo le va a costar 20 dólares. Y si no es miembro de KBBF, le va a costar 40 dólares por taller. ¿Dónde los vamos a hacer? Es en 1700 Corby Avenue, aquí en la hermosa ciudad de Santa Rosa, en el Centro Laboral de Carpinteros. Y el cupo es limitado. Y esto es 30 y ni uno más. Por favor, tomen nota. El primero, el sábado 22 de noviembre, de 9 a 11 de la mañana. Así que, por favor, llame a KBBF al 707-545-8833. Las expresiones y comentarios no representan la ideología de KBBF ni la mesa directiva, sino que es la responsabilidad de sus actores. All right, hello everybody. You are listening to The Queer Life on KBBF 89.1 LGBT News Perspectives, Roundtable Discussions, and Interviews. I'm your host. Again, this is Kaya Kramer and my ho co my, <laughs> my co-host, Mandy Howard. Co-host again. <laughs> Mandy Howard. Say it right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get our tents right. Exactly. And again, um, for those of you that think that we laugh too much and this is a serious subject, just listen to Car Talk for like five minutes. I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> and we're super tame, right? <laughs> like, there's like far less laughing in this show. We, you, uh, you never hear people, <clears throat> the guys on Car Talk cry. Oh, that's, that's yeah. That's, we that's, we've that's cried true. on the radio. You know, we've cried tears of joy, um, tears of sadness, tears of sadness. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I think that's all the kinds of tears there are. 
joy, sadness, tears how- of confusion. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm so confused. <laughs> oh wait, there's those two, yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of people seem to think that's that we are. That's so goofy. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's not actually how I cry. <laughs> that's totally how she cries. No. <laughs> Can you just pretend like you can't hear me through the wall? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an office space. Where... <laughs> hey, check out channel 12. <laughs> Can you just pretend like, you know, we can't hear each other through our wall? <laughs> great movie. Great word. Super awesome. <laughs> Feels good to be a gangster. And too bad we can't play that song on the radio. I know. Well, we can do the censored version. Is there a censored version? Probably not. No. <laughs> It says, darn it, feels good to be a gangster. Darn it, feels good to be a gangster. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to continue yeah. the interview with uh, Shadi uh, Potoski mm-hmm. uh, from Puny Entertainment. She's a trans uh, production studio owner, filmmaker, um, is making waves in the trans community and trans Hollywood. Um, so continue listening to this interview with her. That and She gave me a great interview, and I just want to continue to share it with y'all. Cool. All right. Thanks so much for supporting. Again, you can watch this show. Go to the, thequeerlife.org and watch the show online because we stream video on here. And we, uh, you know, that... You know, we utilize the waves of technology and all that good stuff. I'm such a no. <laughs> anyway, all for listening and we're gonna continue this interview. How, how, how do we break out of this? How do we start getting it so that we can see, like, you know, like, you, you know, when's our next Starship Troopers movie? You know, instead of Johnny Rico, we got, like, you know, you know, Jaina Rico, and she's a trans woman. You know, I'm not saying Johnny Rico should transition, but... Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see it happening little by little. I, I think um, Orange is the New Black... You know, do you think that Laverne Cox plays the pathetic transsexual in that show? I don't think so. I think she's gorgeous. Okay. She's like a rock star in there to me. Yeah, but she's very much like, I think that character is really played for her sympathy. Um, but I, I think in Transparent, the new Amazon show that Jill Soloway is doing, I've seen a lot of affirmative action. Um, from Jill and her team, um, and uh, Ian Harvey's going to have a role as a love interest. Uh, you've got this sort of almost pathetic transsexual in the main character being played by a cis man, Jeffrey Tambor, but then there are a lot of other trans characters that make their way. Uh, there's a mentorship from Alexandra Billings that's very like true and stable, um, and then uh, Trace Lissette plays a yoga instructor that's going to be very true and stable. So I think we're going to see a lot of representation there, and I think a lot of the that positive representation that breaks those two um, sides is going to be just like, where's the trans barista? Where's the trans receptionist? Where's the trans, like just the, you know, not necessarily like a leading role, you know, but just putting trans people into the world as trans people are in the world. Right. You know, where's you know, the where's trans, trans cartoon, cartoon digital media, media maker <laughs> like that? Right. You're right. <laughs> Why am I not represented? No, but it's it's like I would I would like to just see like a lot of a lot more trans people just in the world without being without it meaning a lot, like without their trans status being the core thing about their humanity and their personhood. Um, so yeah, so, yeah, I don't know when we're going to see it. I think that the, the Wachowskis are coming out with Sense8 on Netflix, and there you're going to have a trans lead in Jamie Clayton. And I, I'm i sure that'll be played with a lot of, um, like an even hand and won't fall into either one of those tropes. So we're, we're making progress with, with the streaming services and getting away from network TV. We're seeing better portrayals of trans people on television. So Laverne Cox, um, is Netflix, Sense8 is going to be Netflix, uh, Amazon has Transparent. Those are all very positive portrayals and, and uh, all on streaming services. Amazon optioned a show for me, so as a trans creator, 
I have a share with them. So I, I just, I looked at the streaming services as being a lot more progressive around those issues and, and uh, getting out of the cliches. I, I do want to talk about the, the studios versus the, the online streaming services in terms of selectivity, but I also want to um, uh, kind of point out early, could, could you tell the audience a little bit the significance of the, the Wachowskis? And for those that don't know, the Wachowskis made the Matrix movies, um, previously known as the Wachowski brothers, but I'm sure a lot of people don't know what is uh, up with them in terms of the trans community. Yeah, well, yeah, Lana Wachowski transitioned, transitioned after, after the Matrix, Matrix movie and is yeah, an out uh, trans woman. And then um, uh, they, they made the Cloud, cloud out Outlet list have gender play themes, themes. And now they're, and now they're creating, creating this show um, called Sense8 that, that has a trans lead character in, in Jamie Clayton. So, so um, um, Lana, Lana post transition, a lot of her work has, um, you know, definitely dealt with these themes, which is really amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when she came out and, and she did a video, what she won an award, right? And then, so she did this video and, and people really loved it from the Human Rights uh, or the HRC Award. But then uh, then just got back to work and it's now part of her work and, and feels... That feels like a really good transition. Like it, it wasn't really sensationalized. Um, it, it was before she came out when there was speculation around it. But when she came out, um, I think she's just seen as like a now a leader and a hero in the trans community as a you know as a trans person making writing movies and television shows. That's amazing and it's a good representation. And hopefully. You know, trans boys and girls and non-binary people out there can see Lana Wachowski and think they can make sci-fi. Um, should be great. I, for one, think that you know, the work that you're doing, being an out trans woman, uh, uh, you know, in the film industry, you know, Lana Wachowski, is it Wachowski or Wachowski? I, I keep getting that confused. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I think you're probably okay. right. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it sounds very Jewish to me. It's just like, I'm just like, Wachowski, you know, it's like, anyway, but I'm, I'm Jewish. So my last name is Kramer. So it's like, people get confused. They see the Asian here. But anyway, um, what like like you know if, if eventually we're gonna we're gonna have a time where there's going to be very successful people out there showing that you can be all these different roles in society instead of having to to uh, you know sell sell your body going go into sex work not that the end this, this is something I keep touching on every time I bring up sex work not that there's anything wrong with people who do go about doing sex work it's just that should not be kind of a default option for people. Yeah, well, yeah, well society has created kind of a perfect storm for trans sex work in that, like, um, it's very shameful for anyone who's trans oriented or interested in trans bodies to have relationships with trans people, like typical relationships. I, I, I know, I'm as as a person attracted to men, dating for me, it's very, very hard. So you've got so you that, got and then you've and got, then you got a society that society makes it very, very, very difficult very for trans women, women to, to be employed in any in fashion. Any fashion. Um, um, and then, and then um, um, you know, just you know, the, just, uh, yeah, so, yeah I think, so I think I think those are the two the main factors, factors, but you've got like all, like, all of the all shame, and then you've got this unemployment, and so it's it's just a very accessible place to go for trans women. Um, you've also got the medical insurance issue where transition is expensive and if it's not covered by insurance, like you have to make a lot of money very quickly if you want to transition. And so you're, you're, you know, you find it difficult to earn a living and then you have all these men that are shamed into not um, being able to be seen with you in public. And then you have, um, and, and so sex work is just such a logical and, and sensible step for so many of us. I mean, I definitely, when I was 20, I partook and um, I think that, uh, you know, it's just, it's always right there, it, you know, especially as a, as a white trans woman, um, you know, my, my friends that are in sex work make $300, $400 an hour. Um, that's amazing when McDonald's is saying, we don't want you behind our register when it's hard to get a job anywhere else, you know? Uh, yeah. Hmm. $7 an hour, 
three hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> right. This is kind of hard. My Asian math skills here are, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this that that it's a good point, and it's it, it it almost becomes this vicious cycle unless something needs to change. And you know, I'm gonna you know, I'm asked the question, you know, what needs to change? You know, and you know, this might not we might not be able to answer this. <laughs> Well, we definitely, I mean, everything needs to change. <laughs> uh, just the, the oppositional sexism that is rampant in our society, uh, that, that, and traditional sexism that, like, really um, oppresses feminine people and femininity, um, the health insurance system and, and the medical system, like, um, you know, the AMA doctors are, are and, and Psychiatry associations are way into transition, like that's the solution, but health insurance is behind, so corporate health insurance needs to cover transitioning. It's it's slowly changing, so that's good, and then that'll help a lot. And then we just need to sh stop shaming transphobia and homophobia, and like, if a guy brings a trans woman home for Thanksgiving, he's not weird. He's just a guy who fell in love with a girl. And, that's something that is so prevalent. Like so often as a trans person, I don't worry about myself. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm fine. I can walk probably down the street, but any guy who dates me, I worry about him. He doesn't have the same constitution, you know? And I've met so many guys that are that way that are like really into trans bodies or, or like me as a creator and, and um, you know, as a person who does interesting things, but it's just it's too, too hard, hard the questions the that they're asked from their friends or their family about their sexuality and, and their, you know, it's still it's seen, seen as a kink or it's still, or it's still seen, seen as something yeah. to devalue. Yeah. So, so it all, it, all, it just all has to change. We just have to stop judging people in that way and, and demonizing, you know, and othering trans people and unique sexualities. And, orientations and stuff so, so i don't know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah the uh the metaphor that i use in terms of somebody coming out as trans and somebody tells me it's like oh but you know i'm very strong i'm very confident you know i can deal with this it's not gonna be a problem for me and it's 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 the metaphor of buying a motorcycle it's not you i'm worried about it's everybody else you know? right, right yeah yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> Like, even if you drive a motorcycle very safely, and actually, you know, it's like, I feel like this, you know, I'm, this metaphor grows a little bit more each time. <laughs> even if you're driving your trans life safely, you know, every, you know, every once in a while, there could be somebody that comes along and just hits you with a, you know, you know, one of those big, huge trucks. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's exactly it. Yeah. It's, it's, I am so comfortable and, and I know what I am, you know, there's no doubt in my mind who I am and what I am. It's not me that struggles, it's the struggle with other people walking around in their world. It's, that's, that's the hard part. That's the hard part about being trans. It's not, I think that cis people like to think of it as an internal struggle, that me staying in my bed was me fighting internal demons or my body issues, but it never was. I knew who I was and what I was, but the struggle is with who's going to hate me, who's going to hurt me, who's going to take everything away from me, you know, just who's going to shame me and bully me. That's that's the struggle. How do I walk outside the door? Um, yeah, which is still a problem with a lot of trans women who don't walk outside the door. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, it's it's I, I know for one that in a lot of support groups I've visited and a lot of trans people that I've met that there's people that have said to me, you know, um, I, you know, I lived, you know, 50 years in shame and only recently just came out and feel good. But it's just there's 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 a lot of pain very clearly there. And, and it's, uh, it's yeah. So, yeah, and the yeah, way and people, the way people treat, it, treat it, it's like, I don't think people are even really thinking, thinking about, about what they're what doing, they're like doing, when they like, take that they Instagram take photo. photo. And post, and post it, it. and it's like, and oh, it's like, look oh, at this person. person. That's, That's funny, funny looking, looking to me. They're not, they're not thinking, thinking, about thinking about it. I was just I was in New York, York, and there was a guy. I was with I some was friends at a bar, and um, uh, I just gone to see Hedwig, and I was all dressed up and glittery, and felt really good. And I, there's this guy that was talking to me, and he ended up being like a preschool 
uh, like child development specialist, and I worked in preschool TV. So we had a lot to talk about. We were just drinking and talking, and I was sitting on the ground and just having a really nice time. And I was like, oh, I think this guy maybe likes me. And, and this is just a really great time in New York. And then um, his phone was between us, and I saw a text come in from his friend who was at the end of the table, and he said, do you know that you're talking to a tranny right now? And it was like, I set up, what? I looked at the friend, and I was like, of course he, and, and I asked him, the guy who was talking to me, I'm like, do you know that I'm trans? And he's like, yes. And I was like, does anyone else in this bar not know I'm trans? And, you know, people know. But that guy, in his head, he, he, he was playing by the rules of, like, an old TV show or something. He thought... He was into that deceptive trans thing, like, oh, I have to warn my friend. This is something I know that nobody else has. I have these special eyes. Like, we have to spot the trans people in our world instead of seeing me. It's just a person in the world talking to a guy, you know? Um, so I don't think he even knew what he was doing. And, and through conversation, and like, you know, people, everybody was upset with him. And, and he apologized at the end, but it was just like, that was just autopilot for him. That Those, those kind of stories, those go back to, like, you hear soldiers, soldiers talking about that, like, oh, my oh, dad was dad stationed in, uh, in, uh, in uh, South Korea, South Korea and, he, um, you know, he met a woman met one woman night, night, you know, found out there was something, like, like it's, 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 an, it's old an old story, story that deceptive, deception, deception story. story, so it's like, so it's like we just have we to just get have that to get out, out of the world. The world. No one's no deceiving one's anyone. We're just living. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're passable enough to, that people don't know that you're trans, and I, you know, I, I, I hate to use the word passable, but if you're integrated or you fit into the beauty standards, then people think that you're being um, deceptive. And if you're not that way, then people think that you're, you're just the man in a dress, in a dress right? you're just you're, you're, you're just cross-dressing cross so it's a so lose-lose lose situation, situation. Yeah. you don't really get to just be a human being in the world yeah i always think back to eddie Izzard's little bits like look in a dress look in a dress look in a dress yes and <laughs> and look in a dress aren't you running <laughs> back to russia you know it's like come on it's 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 not a big deal. And you, you talked about trans shaming um, for, for, for men who, who, who are with uh, trans women. I mean, there, there's even a term that you know, many of them will even use, many men who date trans women, tranny chaser. Uh -huh. And uh, why is it that a man can't date a trans woman without there being any kind of stigma attached to it. Why can't you just go out with a girl? Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's really it's sad and makes our life our really life. hard. <laughs> um, um, and especially, and especially when, you're, when you're when you're with, with um, um, some of these some men, I mean, a lot of guys are like, I've never been with a trans person, I've never been interested in it. Um, but, um, but you know, you're really you're rad, rad, so let's so give it a try and I'll see if I can handle it. And we think that too, I mean, like I, I like men, I like men so, like, so like if I am attracted, attracted to a trans man, man I have to think about some of the same things. things. Like, oh, I don't really know what to do with that sexually, you know, like with, with their parts and their pieces, but like I can get over that pretty quick. Like I can, you know, if it's somebody that I'm attracted to, like I don't have those same stigmas. It's not just a man, you know, you know, woman thing or, or cis man, trans, trans woman thing. Like, like it's just, it just, we all have like these ideas of what fires us up or, or we have, you know, we have sexuality and, uh, you know, just, just get over it. <laughs> Figure it out. We're, we're, as Julia Serrano said, we're really more attracted. It's really so much more about secondary sexual characteristics that cause us to be attracted to somebody than genitals anyway. Like we don't even see somebody's genitals until, well, you know, on, on a lot of nights is the first night, first date for me, but you know, like the third or fourth date or whatever, you know, it's, it's not what attraction and um, is, is about, you know, initially. So I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of theories about it. And I don't, I don't besmirch anyone who's like, I don't want to deal with that or I don't want to be with a trans woman if she 
you know, has those genitals. I, I have no problem with it. But, like, we don't need to shame people for doing it. That's the big problem. It's just, like, we just are so mean to the men who like that. And some of these guys are, are, are saying that, like, I just, I thought breasts and a penis from 12 years old, that just, like, stuck with me as, as something I was interested in. And they're actually, like, trans-oriented. Their, their, their sexuality is oriented towards like, a, a trans body for whatever reason. And that person lives with the same shame that we did or any closeted person does. And it's really sad. Yeah, um, well, maybe one day trans women or trans men won't be able to have to face that stigma. And I want to move over here to talking about uh, the work you're doing in Hollywood and the Trans Hollywood Facebook group, which I think you've collected a really blah, blah blah blah, a brilliant group of people yeah, into yeah. there to to just start this discussion about what needs to happen in Hollywood in the film industry to to trying to change the images out there. Like what? Like I, I'm just fascinated by a lot of the conversations that come on. Yeah, and yeah, the Facebook and the group is a closed group, group. so, um, <laughs> but you know, that's just one method of, of communicating, but I also have, um, um, we have people over to my house, and we, we, we you know, have meetings, and, and, uh, and uh, we're at, at BentCon in um, Los Angeles, we're doing a panel, a Trans Hollywood panel. But yeah, we're, uh, our work is, um, it's mostly, it's mostly to answer the question, why are trans people underrepresented in trans stories? Um, when you start talking about trans representation, you know, people will really argue immediately, you just jump to like, oh, trans people don't have to play trans people, or you don't have to have representation. Um, um, in trans world or trans writers or anything else, but we just have to keep asking why are trans people underrepresented in trans stories? If these are our cultural stories, why are they exploited and, and why aren't we the ones that get to tell them? And you can look at the history of oppression to see why that is. So we're just trying to turn the tide um, very slowly. Um, things that we're interested in are like if you have a trans act. Uh, extra, uh, extra, like a background, like background actor on a TV show, show that typically that pays somewhere, somewhere between sixty and eighty-five dollars. But if you want to have trans have extras trans because it's a scene about, about trans people, trans people which, which you know we encourage, um, they should um, be paid should especially be paid extra. extra. So, so it basically, it basically doubles, doubles their rate. rate. So just little just things about like payment, putting together guidelines, talking to Glad and different organizations and different people that have done this work, so that a trans person who's asked to be like a consultant on a show or script consultant or to, or to lend authenticity to some kind of work um, gets paid well and um, and gets the proper credit just things like that because what we've seen is that even people like people will often hire like a trans consultant but then that person just ends up being sort of a paid apologist for the for the production and it's like oh I went in there for five hours I said what I needed to say and they didn't listen to any of it I, I have no control over that so we're just trying to get it to where we have, we have systems, systems set up, set up and, 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 you know, you know collective, collective power. power. Um, um, you know, you know my, grandfather my grandfather was the president of the Car Carper Union, Union, and to me it's like, well, let's, let's work together, together which, is which, is difficult which is very difficult to do in Hollywood because, because there are so, there are so few, few opportunities for trans people. people. It tends to be very competitive. Very competitive. But, but, yeah, just, yeah, letting, just people letting people know, know who's looking who's for a writer, writer who's looking for a consultant, for a consultant and, and we post, post casting notices, notices and, and we write letters, letters to productions production that we found out, like, have cast like, cis, cis actors, actors or, or if we find out that a production is looking for a trans person to play a trans person, person we'll send a nice letter, nice letter to say thank you, that that's, that's really, really important. important. Um, um, and, uh, and uh, you know, and then know, just and also just like uh, uh, political consulting, just helping people with their shows. shows. Um, um, there's there's a lot, there's a lot, uh, uh, and it's just and kind of like kind of it's like, on a case, case by case basis. basis where we'll, we'll hear about, about something. something. Being, Being in LA, LA we'll hear about something, about something, and it's something, like, like we'll either we'll say something very positive, or we'll write a very positive letter, or we'll write a negative letter, or we'll make some phone calls. And we've we've had a lot of success in like tiny. Tiny little, tiny little successes, successes little milestones, little milestones getting people more money, money. Um, um, getting a cis actor uncast from a role, 
we shut we down our whole production one time, time. Um, uh, uh, by calling the sponsors, sponsors of the production, the production and let them know what's going, what's going on. on. So, so uh, uh, you know, a lot of it is just is a little watchdog. People and and education. People just don't know. It's media training and education, and just letting people know that like trans people should be represented in trans stories as you know, as a people with a cultural story and a history. Um, we're not just sensationalized. And it's, 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 it's working. And it's not just us. And we're, we saw on, the, on that show, Transparent, that I mentioned before, um, Reese and Zachary, the trans consultants, and now producers, the show producers, um, did a, with Jill Solway, who's this amazing, you know, creator, writer, director, and intersectional feminist, uh, uh, created a trans affirmative action program. program. So they brought, they brought in an extra. extra. I was an extra on that show in a bar scene. Like they brought in extras to be in every scene, every scene. trans bodies in every, every scene, scene, whether it had to do with trans people or not. Or not. There's, wow. there's, there's like like ten or fifteen speaking, speaking roles for trans people that are now SAG eligible. eligible. Um, um, they put they trans put people in every department, every department. Often. often you know, against, you know, against union, union regulations, regulations, like typical like union regulations, regulations, but like trying to get a trans person to be a set decoration decorator, decorator when there's a union, union around that, that's very difficult very in a union system to have any kind of affirmative action for like an underrepresented culture at class, but they really worked and did it and seem to, you know, I, I think they'll continue to do it. So, um, you know, just applauding those efforts and, and feeling that joy is a big part of what we do as well. Um, so yeah, so, yeah. And it, it, it's, it's also just, just uh, providing support, support and resources, resources for other trans, for other trans people who want to create, create looking, looking looked at each other's scripts and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll loan we'll each other cameras camera or equipment and, and, and a lot of people are doing short films and every day, you know, they find their actors through there and it's, it's pretty cool. Absolutely incredible work and it's something that you're going to have to continue doing. It doesn't look like your job is going to end anytime soon here, Shaddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's um, for sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your activist hours are limited. I mean, I'm also, you know, it's like how much how much of my time is spent towards that activism and how much time is spent being an actor, like a trans creator or doing my show. I have a script due with Amazon uh, this week. <laughs> so I definitely have a difficulty managing that time. But, um, but I'm also, but also yeah, yeah, I'm meeting with somebody tonight to go over uh, some, some consulting fees and put together like a rate sheet, sheet so that trans, trans people can say like, this is how much money I want for this project and, and make sure that they're kind of protected. Because it's a little bit of a, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately with, with our economic um, disparity, uh, it's kind of a buyer's market and it's very, very easy to hire a trans person for very little money because we're making, you know, in general, so little money. So. Um, so we're just so trying, we're to, trying to, you know, empower, empower people to ask for more and, and to see their their knowledge, their knowledge and their ex lived, lived experience, experience as a valuable, valuable thing, thing to story. Because um, it seems to be valuable because people, people keep making trans movies and wanting to put trans characters in it. So there must be some value or they wouldn't use us at all. Well, we are just about out of time on this interview here. I just uh, wa I just want to ask you: Is there are there any uh, last words in terms of anything you want to address out there to our uh, not not only the cis straight community but the queer uh, listeners of the queer life out there? Uh, anybody who uh, just some just some general message for our listeners to hear from uh, Shaddy. Um, um, read read Whipping Girl. Whipping Girl. Uh, uh, <laughs> great you mentioned. And, um, <laughs> And really, and just really please try to support, to support trans, trans media. media. If there's a trans creator, yeah. just, you know, yeah. like forget about yeah. inviting or anything yeah. like that. Just like really try to support trans people, trans people out, there out there putting their neck on the line, making trans media, yeah. which includes, um, you know, I'd say watch Transparent on Amazon. It's coming out, what, in three days? And, yeah. uh, you know, support yeah. trans, trans Kickstarters. Trans and just like, it's, like it's, it's, we really have really to does. try to get trans media going in a, in a better way with the support of the community. Well, you're awesome. There you have it. That is, uh, this is Shadi Petoski from Puny Entertainments, bringing the word of and the rights of trans people, moving it forward, paying it forward. 
And I am so privileged to have had this interview with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great have day. A great day. All right, you too. Okay, bye. 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 KBBF 89.1 FM Conquistando tu corazón Not driving anymore? If you have a member of the family that isn't driving anymore, have them donate their vehicle to KBBF. We'll arrange for free pickup even if they don't live in the Bay Area. We can arrange for pickup anywhere in the country. Donating is easy. Just call 877-411-3662 and our friendly staff will make all of the arrangements. Call 877-411-3662 or donate online at kbbffm.org. Loading complete. Hi, this is Adam Rodriguez. Did you know that today one out of every four American kids is Hispanic? That means many of the future doctors, engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. We all know how hard it is for you to send them to college. This is why we want you to know you are not alone. Many support you, and the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kids' college education. Learn more at hsf.net. Brought to you by the Hispanic Scholarship Fund and the Ad Council. A través de KBBF vamos a ofrecer tres talleres educativos muy valiosos y completamente en español. ¿Se imaginan recibir toda la información que va a ser la diferencia en lo que es su futuro económico completamente en español y en un vocabulario bastante entendible. El primer taller educativo va a ser acerca de las finanzas básicas. El segundo taller educativo va a ser acerca de la jubilación o el retiro. El número tres y para concluir con nuestra serie de tres talleres educativos, vamos a tener pequeñas empresas. El costo de cada taller, si usted es miembro de KBBF, solo le va a costar 20 dólares. Y si no es miembro de KBBF, le va a costar 40 dólares por taller. ¿Dónde los vamos a hacer? Es en 1700 Corby Avenue, aquí en la hermosa ciudad de Santa Rosa, en el Centro Laboral de Carpinteros. Y el cupo es limitado. Y esto es 30 y ni uno más. Por favor, tomen nota. El primero, el sábado 22 de noviembre, de 9 a 11 de la mañana. Así que, por favor, llame a KBBF al 707 545-8833. El sol brilla y el aire fluye con buena información a través de la frecuencia modulada de KBBF 89.1. All right, hello everybody. You have been listening to The Queer Life, LGBT News, Modern Perspectives, Roundtable Discussion, and Interviews. I'm your host, Kaya Kramer, and I'm with my co-host, Mandy Howard. I, I think we should do a shout out. Oh, yeah, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> shout, shout out to Slim, right? Shout out to Slim. Yeah, hey, we love him. He's so great. Uh, he flirts with us all the time. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, so, have, we have so many fans, you know? Yeah, he's a mega um, fan, and he loves us. And You know, being LGBT yeah. um, spokespeople, <laughs> uh, so to speak. So I, I guess I guess we're spokespeople. Spokespeople. Um, yeah, spokeswomen. Um, spokespeople. <laughs> Spokes individuals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> spokespersons. <laughs> anyway, um, I just want to say that, you know, KBBF is continuing its fine tradition of excellent programming, and, you know, we want to continue to be a part of that. So, um, 
<clears throat> please excuse the slight technical <laughs> issue that we had earlier in the interview, but um, we got it all on lockdown now. Our engineers are hard at work. Um, engineer. And, yeah, and <laughs> also known as me fiddling around on the computer. <laughs> but anyway, so that was the interview with Shadi, uh, who from Puny Entertainment, and she 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 gave us a great interview. It was, you know, such a pleasure to be able to interview her and be connected with her. She's doing a great amount of work mm -hmm. out there in the community. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. So <clears throat> uh, before we wrap up for today. Um, I just, you know, I just, you know, want to remind you again. November twentieth was Transgender Day of Remem Remem Remembrance as a part of a, a Transgender Awareness Week. So please, um, just, you know, just, you know, if you know anybody who's got, uh, uh, you know, who is gender nonconforming, who thinks that they might be trans, who just might even just be questioning, reach out to them, talk to them, let them know, hey, you know that, you know, no matter which way that they present themselves, that you will support them that you know you have the that they have your love that they have your friendship mm -hmm. and you know this is going they they're, they're going to be the same person you know they're still going to like the same games uh, they're still going to you know watch the same tv shows you know, they'll, just, they'll just be a little bit more fabulous that's yeah all. more fabulous yeah. or either mass more masculine or <laughs> more feminine depending on you know which or or sometimes neither yeah sometimes yeah. neither yeah mm -hmm. um so <laughs> there's there's all brands and flavors of human beings and so We've said this in previous episodes, and but we will continue to say it. Please, 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 you know, send a text message, you know, give a call, you know, send a Facebook message, you know, sh shoot a tweet, you know. <laughs> let, let them know you're thinking about them. Yeah. Because, and that you love them. Because, yeah, it's very important. Like, if you do that, you, you could be saving somebody's life. And, yeah, it sounds super serial, but, like. <laughs> super serial. Super serial. Please give your friends a call. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you know what, you know. It's like your know, man bear pig, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's as serious as man bear pig, as if, if not more. More serious, you know. There's global warming, there's man bear pig, and then there's transgender awareness. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I think we should put trans awareness at the top of that list. Uh, and then there's next week is man bear pig awareness. Yes. Um, <laughs> but um, so so nerd. Now we have about uh, about. Nine minutes here, and then we're gonna cut out for music, and then you'll prepare you for the next uh, programmer here. But um, no, it's 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 seriously, it's doing speaking out and coming on. You know, we Mandy and I, we had the, you know, we were just having a discussion. It was like, mm -hmm. are we, you know, are we really you know activists? You know? <laughs> yeah. What like what are yeah. we doing? Yeah. Like we're just we're just talking on a radio that's that's what it feels like to me i well it just feels like i'm just talking to a microphone <laughs> well you are just talking to the microphone <laughs> smearing smearing my lipstick all over the microphone <laughs> but you know the fact that you can hear us mm -hmm. the fact that we're here the fact that we are supported by kbbf a volunteer run organization and that well the <clears throat> fact that lg that there's some lgbt voices out there uh, on the air airwaves and online, and there's you know there's obviously more than just us, but the more the merrier. And, you know, it's always better to have more. And the air is a form of activism. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, although you know, as we've said previously, you know, we are a little trans centric. Well, um, yeah. You know, this show, you know, we support the LGBT. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are that many letters in the. And, and we're always <laughs> we're always happy to have a guest from any uh, of the letters in the acronym yeah. or even outside the acronym if you have a story to share yeah um, you know feel free to tweet us at the queer life or you can uh, go to our contact form thequeerlife.org and hit contact at the top right and you know shoot us an email we, we always love um, you know different stories you know share your story you know there's it's it's really important <laughs> that we, we we make people aware of who we are you know that we're that we're living that that we're thriving or you know or that we're struggling it's you know it's really important that we share these things um <clears throat> we have about uh seven minutes left here mm -hmm. um before we got to start shutting down but i want to you know let's let's uh let, let's let's talk about the transition regrets thing for a minute here. all right yeah let's go over it real quick yeah so so the article is um <clears throat> it's let me, see, let me let me let me pull it up right here. <laughs> um, myths about transition regrets. This is from Huff Post Gay, um, Huffington Post. That's the gay section of 
Huffington Post. Post game. Yeah. Huff Post game. <laughs> <laughs> um, all, all the people knew. Um, there's the, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of arguments mm-hmm. um, being as they say trotted out one by one to 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 show that people who transition are worse off as in you know a physical transition hormones or uh, gender reassignment surgery mm-hmm. um, and in order to not worth coming out yeah um, at all mm-hmm. <laughs> that that you will be worse off if you do so which is um, you know it, it would just other statistics show and what most trans people will tell you is is not true yeah well it's absolutely not true people in this very room could tell you that it's not true yeah <laughs> and everyone we know will tell you that it's absolutely not true it's uh entirely empowering it's um it's a huge relief to be able to see and be able to change your body in small little ways it, it may not be big super big ways or anything like that but just having that the ability to kind of bring yourself into an alignment uh, with the way you, uh, you know, the way you feel is really good. Yep. Yeah. So the the first argument that people use uh, uh, against trans people, it's mm-hmm. a Swedish study shows post-operative people, mm-hmm. trans people, are much more likely to commit suicide. Um, and so what they mean by post-operative is people who have had the gender, the re- gender reassignment. Yeah. Does it say more likely or, or just as likely? More likely. To commit mm-hmm. suicide, uh, and the the you know the article says this statement grossly misrepresents the findings of the study and suggests that the study argues against transition related care. Yeah. Quite the opposite. The study outright states that medical transition is supported by other research. So mm-hmm. the the you know the the study literally says that transition is is, is, is supported is supported and is something yeah. that you want to do. And, if you're a trans. And so the study is not as intended as an argument yeah. against the availability of such treatment. Uh, another uh, Swedish study in 2009 found that 95% of individuals who transitioned report positive life outcomes mm-hmm. as a result. 95%. 95%. And, and I want to and I, I want to just add that for the for those out there who have the surgery and for majority of them who have surgery and do regret it. It's normally not because they regret having the actual surgery. It's because they overestimated how much relief it's going to give them in their own life. You know, they they kind of put too many eggs in one basket. And they were looking for this surgery to solve their entire problem. And it's not going to. I mean, it's going to help you move forward. It's going to help out, but it's not going to solve everything. You know, it, there's still so many other things that you have to deal with. Yeah. But it is entirely necessary and important step in transitioning absolutely um and so and and you have to understand that this study was 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 done before 1989 uh it says you know the overall mortality rate was only significantly mortality rate you know death yeah was only significantly increased for the group operated on before 1989 now, mind you, um, I was born in 1989. Um, oh. <laughs> You're so young, and, baby. Um, that I'm I'm 25 years old, and that's 19, you know, the 1980s, and even the 1990s were a vastly different time than you know 2014. I'm sure you remember and, the 80s really well. Oh, super well. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, the latter might also be explained by improved healthcare and persons during 1990s along with yeah. altered societal attitudes towards persons with gender different gender experience. well in, in, in other words you can't assume that just because two things happen together that they're you know cor- correlation does not equal causation you can't assume that just because uh, these people who have had the post-op surgery are committing suicide that it's actually really because there are like i just said earlier the surgery isn't going to solve everything. You still have to deal with people who are jerks and, you know, you know, ignorant people. And you still got to deal with uh, society as a whole in lack of care, lack of support. So all those things come into play. And getting the surgery isn't going to solve all those things. It will make you feel better about yourself, but it's not going to solve everything. Absolutely. So, and, um, you know, we, we live in a hard world and the world was harder for trans people. Mm-hmm. Um, the eighties more so, the nineties less so, but still pretty hard. Mm-hmm. The two thousands, just barely getting better, and it's not within the last five years. Or so yeah, it was five years. 
uh, awareness and trans rights have been like skyrocketing in, into the forefront of every conversation around the country. Yeah. And even the world. Yep. So, um, you know, that's that's just a little piece of the article there. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we can always go over more of it next week. Yeah, we'll go over more of it next yeah. week. I mean, this is important to talk about. But um, you know we're gonna we're gonna start wrapping up a little bit here, um, and <clears throat> uh, just just to let you know y'all know that again you know this this is LGBT lesbian gay bisexual transgender perspectives you know new uh, roundtable discussion and interviews you know we want your stories you know go to the queerlife.org you hit the contact link you can check out all the previous episodes um, we have a um, you know a little um, uh, subscribing list so you can get updates to the show on there as well you know, know what's coming up you know in the following weeks and what has come out um, but also you know just just know that you know we're, we're part of KBBF you know we are you know we, we are so proud to be a part of KBBF mm -hmm. this radio station has been around since the Kennedys and um, we'll be darned uh, if <laughs> if uh, you know if if, if we stay stagnant. So we want to yeah. help push forward progress. We want to make change. Mm -hmm. And KBBF is, is there to support us. So you should support KBBF. Go kbbf-fm.org. Hit the donate link. You know, if you got five bucks, you know, seriously, this radio station, you know, deserves your help. You know, they're, they're doing so much with so little. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's an amazing platform. So um, again, I am Kai, Kai, I'm your host, Kaya Kramer. I'm your, uh, the host of the Queer Live Radio Show, <laughs> and I'm here with Mandy Howard. As always. <laughs> and so thank you all for listening. We totally appreciate um, it's a great time. your patronage or whatever the word is. We get a small little break in the middle. It was great. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. yeah. But um, this has been an excellent show. This is episode 17. Next week will be episode 18. And uh, we will be on next week, every Friday, 6 On, on Black Friday. Just, oh, uh, Black just, Friday Banduru. Black Friday Banduru. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Friday. <laughs> well, winter is coming, everybody. All right. Winter is coming. Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I just came here to dance. Ladies at wax, they all know I'm coming. I will see my patience. I just came here to dance. Too serious. Oh, for a cup of tea. Let it out. Pretend.